In the next two videos, I like to install the full link scenario. I'm on my server, as you can see here. And this specific server here is the one I want uh, to use to install on the one hand side an application server on the other hand side. Then after the application server it's up and running, a standard web portal and additional to a standard web portal, a password research portal. All of them together should be installed with the help of containers and on this specific Windows 2016 server core edition. Core edition, it's the reason why you see here that nice command prompt instead something other else. To install now my application server, the next step uh, that is necessary to do is uh, to move uh, from this shell directly to the PowerShell. This makes the whole thing a little bit easier to handle. So PowerShell is my next command. Here we are. And once I'm in the PowerShell, I can start uh, to deal with commands. Uh, therefore, I'm a little bit prepared because all of these commands are a little bit longer and I don't want uh, to bother you here with a lot of uh, typing. So I just prepared something. As you can see, there are my Docker commands. It's always a Docker run here uh, with some parameters to start my different containers. The first container, it's the application server, as you can see. I like to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the different things. First of all, here are secrets. Uh, secrets are the way to pass in uh, very secure parameters into a container. We saw that maybe in a video before. Uh, and as well, I deal with application directories. There's one for the cache. This is that one. There's another one for search for the application server. This is extremely important because the search directory of an application server, it's used, for example, from the standard web portal for a full text search, something like that. And logs are as well in a specific container on that machine. Last but not least, you see as well a port mapping. The internal container port 80, it's mapped to the outer container port 80. That means if I just ask the server for response, I should get response at the end from that specific server. Knowing all of this, uh, a good question could be where we get this information from. And that's pretty easy, by the way, because all of these parameters are described in the web page. I just move to my browser. As you can see at present for my server, if I try to access the server, I get no response. This is because no containers up and running. We will show that in a second. And there's the Docker Hub. I like to install the application server image. Here we are. And as you can see, if I scroll down a little bit, you will find parameters and how to call them. And all of these parameters will be described so that you will be able to configure this all on your own. This is pre-configured. That means my secrets are already there. Uh, I have as well pre-written my commands I want to use to speed up all the things a little bit. And so I move back to my machine. Last thing, I can just show you that at present there is no container already there. Additionally to that, I can as well show you the images. And as you can see, all images I want to install are already downloaded from the hub. The reason is that makes the whole video a little bit faster because we can avoid download streams and watch them here. But if I like to get them again, I can remove them, for example, and later on uh, download them again from the hub just with the docker run command I like to use. Last but not least, if I just switch to my directory secrets, then you will easily see that here are the folders I was referencing. Please remember I was just showing you here in the command a specific path for the secrets. Here, this is the local path where my system will find the secrets and this will then be the path in the image where the secrets then as secret values will be stored. So back to that. Here are the secrets. I can as well, if you like, to show you that for the app server. And then you will find the connection string, for example, uh, the, the database system, how to get it, and then a session certificate, which is important, especially for an application server. So out of this, and now I start to run my commands. Therefore, I just copy my specific starting command from my text file. Here we are. 
just copy them in there. The command gets executed as you can see. And now we should have a container. So docker ps should show me now one container. Here we are, it's my application server, as you can see, brilliant. And if I double check that now in my web portal, instead of this page that shows us nothing, we should now get a login mask for our application server. And here we are. The reason why I have not to log in is because I tried this before I start recording here before and these credentials are already cached uh, in the browser. So I directly can see here my application server without logging in. I can, if I like to as well, just uh, go for example into the documentation and play around with Swagger if uh, that is my will or I can see what my application server is doing. And at the end, it's easy because the only thing I will see here is just one session. This is the session I'm on here. And that is the reason why I don't see here something more. Back at the end uh, to my command shell, if I just have a look into that data directory where all the data is stored, I have just to step uh, to the D drive for that. Then I can see, for example, the search directory, which is the directory uh, we will use with other applications later on, or let me say that way, other applications will use that directory later on. And if I look into that, then I see here some files that contains data that could be used for the full text search later on, for example, from the standard web portal. With that, I'm just finished with that video. We have seen how to install an application server. And in the next video, we will show you then how to install a web portal.